Hello everybody and welcome to The Final Plan, the Friday show from Planet FPL where we discuss what we're going to be doing with our teams and the final kind of rundown of any bits and bobs and discussion points before the weekend, game week 27. You know what they're all saying, don't you? Where's my quiz? Where's my quiz? <laughs> <laughs> no quiz. If you come into Planet FPL Live 3 in Manchester, the numbers keep trickling up but we've only got like four tickets five tickets left mate that's it we're done there's gonna be 80 people there madness i'm sure the venue can hold more but i don't think we can cope with more <laughs> <laughs> so we're pussied out a bit here yeah no uh, 80s eight. i feel like i feel like at the start we were like yeah 80s like about a perfect number and i think that's that's where we're going to be at right yeah now. yeah true that's a um, crowd yeah, man, it's, good. it's going to be good. I'm really looking forward to it. a change of uh, scenery because we are Londoners for and from everything we do generally is down south. So looking forward to coming up north this weekend. So this is our final show we're recording before Planet FPL Live 3. So this might be the final ever Planet FPL podcast. <laughs> yeah, bad things can happen in <laughs> Manchester. Um, there was some midweek football. Game week 26 is finally over. You ended on 59 points, just like me. Minus four. Minus four, yeah. Brilliant, isn't it? When you, you you think, oh, yeah, De Bruyne's got a goal and assist. He's got the top bonus, clean sheet bonus, all that malarkey. And all the other City players have missed, basically. No, you know, no one's got Rodri. Or hardly anyone's got Bernardo Silva. And even though you know that because of the effective ownership, you're probably not seeing a rise, mm. it was still a little bit deflating to see that rank go down yeah. even more last what night. Are you 1.1, 1.2 you, you now? That, from, uh, from a perspective of being a De Bruyne owner, a non-captainer, was the best possible outcome, really, that it, yeah. that it could have been. Yeah. And yet, as, a, a as we'd said on Tuesday night, it was, didn't really matter. There was going to be more red arrows. You know what the other irony is about my FPL banter season? Had I not made the Mane to Salah transfer, it would have captained De Bruyne. <laughs> because I wouldn't have had the faith to captain Mane. Salah. Oh, man of money, yeah, If yeah. I'd have stayed yeah. that way, I thinking, mean, will he, won't he play and could be a one-pointer. Such is life, man. So there you go. You're what now? 1.1, 1. 1. 1.2? 1. 1.1 1 and a half or something. I went Doesn't down even to 508k but now. I did have De Bruyne captain in Sky Wednesday night. Yeah, I didn't. I had Aguero. now... Only just outside the top thousand. Lovely jubbly. We need that money, yeah. Let's it's, notice the it's, we. <laughs> it's it's listen. Fifteen months from now, fifty grand for James and a and a kebab for Suj. I think it's yeah. it's like it's happening. Big Mac, mate. Let's see. Talk to me about this game because I've not seen a lot of it. Obviously, your team were involved. Yes. I think like you could have had um, the the amount of worrying about the Man City team having waited for it for 10, 11 days. I think you could have had like Messi up front and nobody would have even noticed. Would the game have been any different if you had Messi up front? Mm, what, I don't know what you mean. Like, I, d I don't even know what your team was. Our I've, team. I've still not even uh, looked. Oh, I so know we from, could have had I Messi I know from the bits I've seen that obviously Antonio we played, played up front. Uh, but I didn't even look. We had uh, pretty much a standard back four. Bonner and Diop in the middle. Fabian goal. Creswell at the left. Really, we had a back five. Ryan Fredericks on the right. Uh, and then Arthur Masuaku kind of dropped in to make it a five with Creswell. Um, and it really was a 5-4-1. Uh, in the middle of the park, you had uh, Noble, Rice, uh, Suchak and Snodgrass, who was the only one who was trying to break forward and, and give Antonio any level of support. So most of the game, 85%, uh, when, when they had the ball, was a 5-4-1. Um, they played, obviously, I don't know, did you see their team? It was uh, David Silva, Rodri, uh, Kevin De Bruyne in the middle. Aguero and Jesus. So and, nobody knows yeah. where they stand for Saturday. And uh, Bernardo Silva on the right up front. It's the uh, Mahrez owners I feel a little bit sorry for. Yeah. With obviously yeah. Sane still not quite fit and Sterling yeah. being injured. And you think, well, he will play, won't he? Mm. Yeah. It's so. an odd one. It was. Proud of the team, to be honest with you. Because really? they had to work hard yesterday. They, they, what chasing Rodri chasing everyone mate to, to City keep the ball so well and once they'd gone one up like you know they, they, they're they gonna just keep the ball and keep the ball and keep the ball and they're happy to go from Aguero having it all the way back to Edison all the way back up they'll just keep the ball 
look, it, you go to City knowing that they're a better team than you and have better players than you, and you've got to try your best. And um, d- d- Ricey put in a ship. They, they all worked hard. We were going to get outclassed, but they worked hard, and they worked hard till the end as well because you've seen us. In the, I think we're second or third in the table for second-half goals conceded. We could have been a, a deck of cards, um, but I felt like they kept working. Were we good enough? Not even close, but there's plenty of teams that are going to go to City and get beaten good and proper. Um, so th- it was what it was. Um, they were the better team. They had the possession for so much of the ball. 20 shots to our one. Um, 877 passes to our 245. Th- those stats basically t- dictate the game. You know, I think you know Rodri's stat. No, I don't, to be honest with you. I know he's obviously he's scored, but that was it. Uh, Rodri's incredible stat from the game. Uh, 178 completed passes, the highest ever in the Premier League since Opta began recording these wow. statistics in 2003. Doesn't surprise me. They just were so much better at keeping the ball. That 178 passes by Rodri was nine more than West Ham. Hmm. That's incredible. Uh, 178. Yes. The stats that they showed on the Sky, on Sky at the end of it was we did two, completed 244 passes, so I'm not sure... Sure, it wasn't clearances. Yeah, definitely not, mate. It was eight eight seventy seven to two hundred and forty four or something. But I don't know. But either way, Rodri one seven eight, West Ham one six nine. There's a pass from Rodri every thirty seconds. Yeah, they they just mad keep it ticking along so well. The majority of the second half was it was like uh, watching a training ground exercise where one team keep the ball and the other have to defend but they have to defend without being allowed to tackle so it's all about just keeping your shape and moving this way that way literally that's what it was because we weren't getting in to make tackles and they were passing it around without it sounds crazy saying without being overly I've aggressive seen five but... minutes of the game and just from the clips I've seen in terms of the tempo of the game and also the atmosphere in the ground it wasn't it was full empty, was it right? yeah, yeah more than half empty at some point yeah, it was ridiculous. It looked the like it had a feel of very pre season ish. So it was training ground exercise for City. And um, all you can say is um, they had a debate that uh, Jamie, uh, Jamie Pretty Boy, what's his uh, surname, Redknapp, and uh, Micah Richards were talking about it at the end of the game in the comment, uh, not commentary, but, you know, punditry or whatever, that a Liverpool player, and more than likely Jordan Henderson, is going to win player of the year because of what Liverpool have achieved. But if you go on pure skill and talent and performances this season, Kevin De Bruyne is the best player in the league, head and shoulders above everyone. But he's not going to win player of the year. Well, he might because, I think, with what Liverpool have done, it could split the the vote. Say say there's 70% of people think it should be a Liverpool player. If that gets split over yeah. three or four players, but if you ask those and De Bruyne people, gets the other thirty percent, he'll win it, won't he? Yeah, maybe. But if you if you ask those same people who's the best player in the league, they'll say Kevin De Bruyne. It's just that based on the circumstance of the season, maybe a Liverpool player will win it. I'm I'm not bothered either way who wins it. To be honest with you, I just think oh, he's he is phenomenal in the way that he can grab a game by the scruff of the neck and. Um, yeah, I mean, all in all, you look at it, and I've got to look at it from a West Ham perspective. They they put a shift in yesterday, and that's all I can ask. You, you we were going to go up there and highly, highly likely to lose. They work their socks off. Will that'll do? Will the game Monday night at Anfield be any different? No, other than the fact it'll be an atmosphere in the ground. Sorry, City fans. Yeah, I mean, I think they'll accept that. And I'm not. It was hand, so I'm not handing out blame. This is part when you see that um, attendance last night, and it didn't look like your end was completely full either. And it's no, that's no criticism, by the no, way. No, no. This is part of the reason why I scream so much about late notice of rearranged fixtures. Yeah, yeah. Monday's gonna be no different. No different whatsoever. They're gonna keep the ball, keep it moving, quick, 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 and we're just gonna have to keep our shape and work our socks off. Um, the the problem we have is that our attack is so isolated. Antonio so isolated um, so much of the time. So Jared Bowen got his his fifteen minute cameo at the end. It was pointless. Uh, Zabaleta came on. Ryan Fredericks, I think he's dislocated his shoulder. Um, he went into Rodri and fell very horribly. But Zabaleta came on and got more, got the crowd going because they love him. And that's his last appearance at, at the Etihad. Um, but yeah, there you go. What about your lot, Champions League? Well, yeah, we, we'll do that just before we do. Obviously, Liverpool lost Tuesday night mm. uh, at Atleti. I, I didn't see the game, but 
Um, I've seen I've seen and read lots of stuff about how Atleti set up tactically in a four four two, which you could make a, a case if you want to try and be a cool kid about it. That is a four four two zero because of the position of the two forward players and how they would be defensively. You're just completely putting up a block of four, a block, another block of four, and then a block of two. And then saying, go on then, break us down, what have you got? Do not be surprised to try and see teams copycat that. And if you think of, say, if West Ham went and played with Antonio and perhaps a Snodgrass or an Anderson, who... Antonio can play as the furthest right at the, at the tip of any formation, but could also drop off into those areas to put up. You, you're basically putting yeah. up a... You're not pressing, you're putting a barrier up in front of Gomez and Van Dijk and saying, we are not going to let you pass that into Fabinho Henderson area, essentially. A lot of people might try and copy that. I don't know if many teams in this country have the capability to play that system with a structured discipline that a side like Atletico under Diego Simeone has been so well drilled over so long. And Atletico showed you what you can do defensively in that system. And on Tottenham on Wednesday night showed you what you shouldn't do in that <laughs> system. Because Tottenham decided to rock up in basically a very similar formation to what Atletico did. And in terms of system, and again, trying to put that block up, stop passing between lines with, say, Lucas and, and Ali originally in the first half and then later with Bergwijn in the second half once uh, Leipzig went deeper. The only reason this game finished 1-0 is because Leipzig went in front and went, this will absolutely do. They were missing key centre-halves that will be back for the second leg. They were a very, very good side. Didn't surprise me how good they were at all. I'm already sick and tired of what I'm reading about, oh yeah, we're 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 climbing up mountains, but like we we can't reach the next level because we haven't got the tools to keep climbing and all that shit. Let me ask you, how are the players meant to feel hearing those words when they're basically being told they are not capable to step up? Whether they are there or not, we know what a blow it is, is for Kane and Sons who, to be missing. Um, I don't know who came out with those words. So you know who came uh, out the, with those the, words. He who must not be named. No, he can be named. Yeah, but you can't name him. <laughs> no, I can name him. His, uh, name's, his name's Mourinho and I, I have sympathy. I, only saw the I have sympathy with what he's working with tools and I get that, right? It's yeah. a, it's a, To judge him on this now is very difficult and harsh, although I will. I can judge him on what he's saying afterwards, which is not going to make his players feel any better. He's already getting his excuses in for for Chelsea on Saturday, when actually, if you take away the Sun injury, the results previously in the league should lead us into a positive position where we feel like on Saturday, let's go and have a go. Let's try. Mm. Because we're in a situation now where obviously Sun is a far superior player to Bergwijn at the moment. But otherwise, we'd be in the same position as we were in this time last year with just no Kane. Hmm. All this about, ah, oh, you should have bought another forward. They went, I've gone and bought another attacking player in Bergwijn, right? So there is extra cover there. We've still got Bergwijn, Lucas, Deli Ali, Lamella's coming back to fitness. Hmm. Don't tell me that these guys are not capable. No, they're All more right. than so capable. So they ain't going to be able to rotate as much. No. But how much do Tottenham? It's not like Kane ever gets mm. rotated or anything. Do you know what I was awesome thinking? Uh, watch, when I, in the second half of the West Ham, like right towards the end, the last 80, 80, 90 minutes, I was thinking if Spurs do epitomise a little bit where the team is greater than the sum of the parts, especially in the last couple of seasons where you've got to the Champions League final and done so well in the league, you've probably been outperforming the individuals in the team. Would you agree? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. West Ham are the opposite, where the individuals, are the team together, it seems to be so much worse than if you look at the individuals on an individual basis, where we have players with so much talent, yet when you put them in an 11, they can't play together. I think, back to the point of Spurs, if you get the team motivated, they can play together as a team and outperform maybe their individual levels of whatever they're at, which is which you've seen against City and stuff like that. You just... Bring the team together. And and yeah, he who must not be named doesn't do that. 
at all. He's trying to create a siege mentality. He's doing it in the wrong way. The two things that I saw on social media that you might comment on, they might be pointless. One was Deli Ali's reaction to being subbed. He wasn't angry with Mourinho, was he? He was just annoyed at who knows? The pitch. Who knows? I, I didn't agree with him saying publicly he'll be pissed off with his performance. Mm. What he should have just said is, is, which was the truth, I believe, in what he explained in his press conference about wanting to play the two quick players up front together because D Ali was Joe says Ali he wasn't, wasn't happy with Delhi's. I didn't mind the change. I had yeah. no problem with but that. Did Jose say he wasn't happy with Delhi's performance? Or did Delhi say he wasn't happy with his own, own performance? No, Mourinho, bas Mourinho basically said in, in roundabouts terms that Ali was shit. <laughs> and what about the comment that came out from Mourinho? Um, I, I think a reporter asked him, were like... Uh, uh, Leipzig good or were Spurs bad? Well, I don't know why he didn't answer the question. And he just said, that's an unfair question, move on. Yeah, because he's what he's trying to do, he's trying to create that. He's he's building his excuses, mate. Mm. He's building his excuses. The reason he's close to Chelsea is because of nothing significant, in my opinion, that he's done at Tottenham. Nothing has changed. And I'm not. that's not being critical when I say that. It is not any better than when Pochettino left. The reason we are close to Chelsea is because Chelsea have taken 15 points from 14 games. Mm. That's why. And because none of the others, as good as Sheffield United, Wolves have been this year, can't get United and together. Arsenal can't be consistent. Yeah, That's why this is open. In any other season, this would be finished. Mm. And that's why I never thought we'd get there is because of our points total. It's, it's remarkable to think that if we win on Saturday... We'll, we'll go fourth over the weekend and it might even be that at the end of this season, as we now know, that fifth might even be enough. Stop making excuses. Get on with the tools that you've got and find a way because I know that tactically, that's one of the best aspects of him. Mm. The, problem, the problem with him for me is watching that last night, uh, Wednesday night, is so shit. When you win a game of football, on most occasions, you will go home happy regardless of result. Losing under this fella and playing like that is unbearable. It's unbearable. That system needed changing instantly in that game. I, all, he, it, all to me it felt like he was hoping for was mistakes from them because they had key centre-halves missing and hoping that one direct ball was going to get a Lucas or a Bergwijn away. Like, you can't... That's not sustainable. You're on a one-off game, you can put up... And we're not as good enough defensively as... The earlier United team we had before it started falling apart last season. And obviously, we haven't got John Terry's and etc. like that. Or people that you had at Inter Milan. Even Real Madrid with Ramos, etc. So you can't expect to sit back and play defensive football constantly. And expect to be winning games of football regularly. You can't keep getting away. I know how many chances we had at Villa at the weekend. But every single one was through a Villa mistake. Mm -hmm. like we've never opened them up. Anything we did last night, we never opened them up. Um, it's just really painful. You know, what was funny was the atmosphere was really good in the build-up to, to kick-off. And you could see the teams in the tunnel and that. And Loris is there on his own for about 10 minutes. And my dad said he'd, he'd watch Leipzig in Munich the other week when they drew nil-nil, which I was pleased about because my dad, he's very blinkered and he doesn't. Yeah. And he was like, do you know what, James? Shit, they're, these are good, you know. And I said, you don't need to tell me. I'd like, I yep. know that. Yep. He said, in 10 minutes, it might look like Loris is playing on his own. It, <laughs> It, they should have been two new up within a minute. Wow! Like just from minute one, they they were they wanted they were the only team that turned up and went to play football. That's more hurtful to me than actually losing. It's fascinating. I'm I uh, I'm not getting any pleasure out of your pain with Spurs, but I find your uh, assessment of it fascinating because. Even when Mourinho got to the end of his tenure at Manchester United, there were a lot of fans that will blindly follow this guy and oh, still it's think it's he's already amazing. people like that at Spurs who who just think Mourinho's the best thing since sliced he, bread. Like eventually he's going to win the league and stuff. Wow, there ain't a player in that squad at the moment other than a fully fit Harry Kane and firing yeah. that uh, is good enough to play for a title winning team. The Mourinho effect. I'm fascinated by. It. I think. You know what I'd love to do is like a, a, a special where we, we speak to people of clubs where that Mourinho's managed on the pro and, and anti side because I think your your assessment is very uh, logical, tactics based. You're basing it on what you see on the pitch and nothing to do with the hype. Maybe the opposite, you've got twenty percent disapproval of the guy. I'm more disapproval. Yeah, do you yeah. know what I will come but, down harsher, yeah. Sure. But I reckon 
if they played good football, they've, you've, you've had a couple of games where you played really well um, and you have been positive about the guy. Yeah, which one was it? Well, well <laughs> Burnley maybe. <laughs> Yeah, I was positive after Burnley. I was pos- very positive. Burnley. I was positive, to be honest, on the first game. What I saw in terms of what him trying to do with Aurea mm. and Ben Davis, who's now back in the team, and Ben Davis on that penalty. Do you know what? If it was Serge Aurier making that tackle, it would be all over social media, mate. You know, gentle Ben, don't get the stick, does he? Mm. It was an, it's a terrible decision that's not ultimately cost us the game. I mean, because Le- Leipzig should have had a tie finished last night. Mm. Yes, I am harsher on Mourinho because this isn't the football that I want to watch. No. It's just... I, I I don't see it going anywhere, but he's absolutely going to get away with it and he's going to continue to get my backing inside a football stadium because of the situation he's in. I understand the situation that he's missing his two best footballers, but it's not like there's no one there. No. And there's plenty within Tottenham who... We talked about Parrot the other day on, on Tuesday. Stick him on the bench, mate. Yeah. He's good enough to, to give you 15, 10 minutes if you need a goal, potentially. Mm-hmm. Should we talk about our FPL teams? Well, I suppose it's what we normally do on the final. Yeah, plan. we've now got like That's th- three minutes. When, go. <laughs> when, when, when midweek games take over. Yeah. Right, my me this week, I am almost certainly rolling a transfer. Join the club. The... Big decision for myself is I'm going to be leaving James Madison, Jamal Lascelles and Diego Rico. Uh, Lascelles at Palace, Rico at Burnley, Madison at home to Manchester City as my free substitutes this week. There are plenty out there that are considering a bench boost. I understand why. Some of these fixtures for the clubs that wear... You've got certain assets who might be budgeted as normal subs. You're looking at Southampton Villa, Wolves against Watford, even Palace against Newcastle, Burnley against Bournemouth. And you're thinking, I don't know if I really want to leave these guys out this weekend. And I can see people doing it. What's your team? I will I will just just to close on that, I will finish what I said previously on one of the podcasts. If you genuinely believe your bench, your if you want a bench boost, that your four substitutes can get you in excess of sixteen points. By all means, do it. Do not be surprised when they all concede just the one goal and don't mm-hmm. return anything. My lineup this weekend will be Alex McCarthy in goal, Robertson, Alexander Arnold, Charlie Taylor of Burnley, De Bruyne, Captain Salah, Adama Traore. A note on Adama Traore: We are recording this prior to the Wolves game. Yep. Um, or on prior to the Thursday Europa, Europa League, League games. Yeah. Bradley Parker, our Wolves correspondent, believes there's a good chance that Traore might get left out of the weekend. I'm going to ignore that. And my other midfielder will be Jack Grealish away to Southampton. My front three is Jimenez, vice captain, Jamie Vardy, and Daniel Ings. Just a note on Daniel Ings that Carl Walker Peters is injured. That tactical change that I suggested in the way Southampton finished the game. Um, against Burnley last week might be how they start against Villa. If that's how they start, that's not good for Danny Ings. Yeah, it basically rules him out of captaincy material. I think you still play him. However, it's probably more likely Jan Valery is very close to fitness and I believe it's more likely they stay with the same shape and would play Valery if he's available or more likely James Ward-Prowse would play at right back. Yeah, I thought, is he fit again now? Yeah, he played at the weekend. So he was fine, yeah. Um, I'm going in with McCarthy in goal as well, Trent and Robbo. Uh, but I'm playing Lundstrom this week. The choice is Lundstrom or Rico. And I'm going to go with Lundstrom. I think the home tie against Brighton and Hove Albion, again, he can come off the bench and do some damage. <laughs> Versus Rico away at Burnley. I don't know, Burnley been doing I right. think you should take them Lundstrom points and run, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, it's not... Uh, a premium spot for me, Lundstrom or Rico. I mean, I'm hoping for. T- I'll get. I'll take my two points, and if I end up with a five or six or seven, it's just a bonus. My midfield very similar to yours: Salah, Traore, and De Bruyne, captain. I've got Madison. If I had the, uh, if if Villa didn't have a blank the week after, I'd be swapping Madison for Grealish right now. But with that blank, I just, just can't justify that transfer. So Madison's staying in, and then Vardy, Jimenez, and Ings. I do not like having Madison and Vardy against City. Um, I'd rather get rid of Madison and move him on for someone else. But 
I don't. I, I draw, it's not, the Leicester not, fixtures afterwards, yeah, isn't it? Not enough to uh, justify my transfer. I'd rather roll, and then it gives me a couple of options going into the blanks now of what I can and can't do. Um, I've still got Kelly sitting as an injured player on my bench, but I'll deal with the third injured player on the bench. But I'll deal with that next week. So yeah, I think I think talking. that that's almost a definite change. And you know my fear with that is you're going to buy one of the players I've already got again. Lascelles or Charlie Taylor. Now it'll be Lascelles. Yeah. Mm. And then no, you'll never catch no, me because we have the same team. Well, part problem, yeah. But I, I do think these blanks and impending doubles will begin to slowly break the template. Yeah, I'm looking forward to playing my second wild card. I'll be honest with you, mate. Uh, I won't be playing it for a couple of months, so it's not really in my thoughts, mate. Uh, you've never really said or defined what you're intending to do, Chip Strategy. Are you working towards 31 or are you free hit? Uh, I will try and get through 31 without it. I'm not making any decisions until the FA Cup. I'm not making any kind of decisions until the FA Cup. So it's it's on ice. North of East South, anything good happen in that? Um, I think I had a decent week, actually. 60 points, James. It's all right, isn't it? You got more of it. 61. <laughs> unbelievable. With Kevin De Bruyne's 14 yesterday, you really did me. Uh, I just had returns from Lundstrom, Trent, Robbo, De Bruyne, Calvert-Lewin. Can't argue with that. I, uh, Lacazette and Aubameyang captain returns. Danny Ings return. Jack Grealish return. I've got a son in there and I've still not beat you. No. And obviously now I've got to deal with the fact that my my only really good FPL asset in this side, other than Jack Grealish, who blanks not this week but the following week, in Hyun Ming Sun is now injured. I mm. need to figure out what I'm going to do with with that. It's just it's a massive, massive headache. Yeah, I certainly won't be going to a Tottenham player. That's a certainty. I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet. No idea. Haven't thought about it. We do need to make some decisions on the differential team, though. Have any players dropped, jumped above 10% then, 20%? So, no. Our highest owned players, those are new listeners, we can only buy players owned at under 10%. If they hit 20%, we have to sell. This differential team is basically ranked in the same position as my main team at the moment. Roberto Firmino remains at 19% ownership. We are okay there for the moment. We have two free transfers, 1.2 million in the bank, and Hyun Ming Sun potentially out for the season. So I don't think there's any time to waste here, sir. We need to make some changes. Sun out. We've also got Neil Mopé, and I'm sick of it. <laughs> Sun out, Mopé out. How's about the fella at Villa? I've got 12 players on a watch list here. Eight midfielders and four forwards. Go on, let's I'm do, listening. Let's do the four forwards first for Mopé. I was going to say Samata. No, he's not on the list. Because they're going to blank 28. Yeah, fair play. Uh, who is on your list? The four forwards that I've listed are, and I'll go for most expensive here, Callum Wilson, 7.4 million. Decent. Uh, Burnley away this weekend, has scored two goals in three games now. I don't feel like Bournemouth for any form, but money is not going to be an, an issue. Put it this way, if we picked the most expensive midfield and forward here to play Son and Mulpe, which would be Wilson and Richarlison, we can afford it. Odiene Garlo, 6.5 million. Nah. Had as many shots on target Monday night as Chelsea, despite only playing about two minutes. But don't let Frank Lampard tell you how many Chelsea how, how many shots Chelsea had because he thinks they had fucking loads. Diogo Jota, 6.1. We potentially want some Wolves coverage at some point soon. We can't get to Traore or Jimenez because of their ownership. My worry with that is also there's Neto and Daniel Prodence. Too much risk of rotation with him. And last? Jay Rodriguez of Burnley. Oh, yeah, I like it. Now we're talking differentials. Uh, what's the injury news around Chris Wood and uh, Ashley Barnes at the moment? Well, this is part what puts me off of Rodriguez a little bit. is, And obviously, it's of those, it's other than Jota, but you don't know if Jota's going to play. Rodriguez has therefore got really the best fixture, knowing that he will definitely play at home to Bournemouth, whether Chris Wood is or, is or isn't fit. It, the choice will be, if Wood's fit, he plays. If he's not, Vidra will play, I, I should imagine. Ashley Barnes is still a little bit off. Rodriguez has now had a, a consistent run of games. He's played 90 minutes the last four games in a row. Now, admittedly, there's only the one goal, that really great goal that he scored at Old Trafford in game week 24. He is 0.3% owned. 
available in game week 31, although I think for this team we'll free hit, so I disregard that a little bit. And he is he's cheap, mate. Was he five seven? I think Jay Rodriguez five seven. Yeah, oh, I like Jay Rodriguez of all of them. But well, let's look at the midfielders. If we've got enough money, maybe we've Callum got enough Wilson, money for whatever. Callum Wilson's the safer option, uh, and Jay Rodriguez is the difficult. They've option. got Chelsea at home and Liverpool away afterwards. Callum Wilson. Yeah, I don't think that. I think they're he's relatively fixture proof. If anyone's going to get on the end of the chances, Callum oh, he's fixture proof. He, you know, he didn't score for three months, mate. Yeah. He's definitely fixture proof. <laughs> <laughs> Callum Wilson. Um, I I would go Jay Rodriguez in the differential team, but if you want to go Callum Wilson and be safe, I'm just concerned that. that Rodriguez is then just another transfer waiting to happen. Yeah, but I, agree with you. I also feel like like defensively in the squad we're okay at the moment with this team. You know, if it don't work, just change it again. Mm. I'm not sure. Midfielders, Bruno Fernandez. He's on the list. Bruno Fernandez. Just get him in it. Be done with it. Differential, bit of fun over Richarlison. Well, uh, Everton are playing okay at the moment. Oh, we can't have Richarlison. It's 10.1%. Oh, lovely. <laughs> Who else is on the list? Re removes from watch list Richarlison. Oh. What a bummer. So, Fernandes is the only one on this over 7 million. Ryan Fraser, 6.8 million. I thought he was much better, in, particularly in the first half at Sheffield United. Uh, yeah. Still, if you look at his stats, though, piss poor in terms of assists and goals this season. Harvey Barnes. I like you know, it's not this weekend, though, really, is it? No. It, it's, it's probably, I think that's a swap, maybe Tielemans, because we got Tielemans in this squad. Tielemans to yeah. Barnes next yeah. week, maybe. Yeah. Um, a couple of players priced at 5.4 million. DJ Tim Westwood. Okay. Jean Martinho, again, for potential Wolves coverage, ticks over. Alain Saint-Maximin. Mm. It interests me. It interests me. The run is good, yeah, no yeah. doubt. But Palace they away, don't score goals. Palace mate. away, Burnley at home, Southampton away, Sheffield United at home, Villa at home, Bournemouth away, West Ham at home. They don't I know score goals. they don't score goals. But he's of the attacking ones, he's the most likely <laughs> if anyone does. Yeah, maybe. And the only other player I listed who I was critical of on the main podcast but is likely to get a run of fixtures for another side who has a good run is Musa Gineppo at Southampton, 0.1% owned, 5.2 million. I don't mind uh, Moutinho there or Westwood. They're both decent picks, but Bruno Fernandes is the one that I would like to. I can't see myself getting him in my main team, and I think, you know what, he's going to... He's going to tick along with an assist and a goal every other game, every game, that kind of thing. Two out of three, he's going to pick up a return, Bruno Fernandes, in my opinion. If we're going to go Tielemans to Barnes next week, then I think uh, uh, Bruno, son to Bruno Fernandes. No, no love for St. Maximin, no. I do, but not... I can't believe I'm even offering this out, actually. But, but... The, the option is son to St. Maximin. No, nah, it doesn't make sense to me. What are we going to do with the other six million? <laughs> okay, we'll go Fernandes. Fernandes and Callum Wilson? Yeah, or do you want to... Uh, if Fernandes goes in, he's staying in, isn't he? Yeah. So yeah, yeah. does that open up the idea of punting Rodriguez, maybe? Mm. Bournemouth are away to... They're at home to Bournemouth. Uh, home to, uh, sorry, Bournemouth are at home to... The Burnley are playing Bournemouth, Bournemouth this weekend. Yeah, so. Wilson or Rodriguez? Wilson. Yeah? Yeah, he, he, we'll hold him for a little while and then we can maybe look at some more interesting moves after. Okay. Callum Wilson and... Bought a fucking Bruno Man United Fernandes. player and a Bournemouth forward. How bad is that? Yeah. <laughs> uh, team, subject to team news, we should say, as we're pre-recording. Yes. Anything else to add? Uh, I will be streaming this afternoon, earlier than normal, most likely. Keep an eye on Twitter for timings. Uh, there may also be a second stream later in the evening, in the car, in the Try. dark, driving up to Manchester. You can for turn the lights on. Tomorrow's Planet FPL free live show in Manchester. Correct. Let's do this, y'all. Yes. Guys, thanks for tuning in to the final plan. Do just keep your eyes tuned on the streams, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and we'll be back at you next week with a full rundown and FPL content. I think it'll be well worth keeping an eye on Twitter over the weekend because we'll be taking pictures, streaming all sorts of stuff from hashtag Planet FPL Live 3. Other than that, do share the podcast with your FPL playing friends, family, frenemies, whatever they oh, may who's be. Who's your captain this week? Mohammed Salah. Can't, uh, is there any other option? 
not for me. Yeah, there are like Jimenez, and th- th- there are a few. But when you look at it, trust me, Salah, Salah against Masuaku and Creswell, he'll be fine. And yeah, he'll be more than fine. Yeah, if you well, look, he blanked last week against Norwich, right? If you it own Mane playing against West Ham, if you own Mane, um, I would uh, wouldn't. There, there's no argument to on Salah over Mane. Did Frederick's getting me, injured. You know? Yeah, he's dislocated his shoulder. Oh, right. So he's stuck with Zabaleta as well. Yeah, quite possibly. Oh, well, there you go. Um, right, that's interesting, isn't it? Well, he may try out uh, Jeremy Ngakia, who came, who played against um, Liverpool in the home game, if you remember. Oh, that, that's a good shot, um, usage. So hopefully, oh, I mean, he should, because... So this poor kid's going to get to play two games all season, both against Liverpool, is that yeah, what Yeah, he played well last game. I think we'll see. Um, as long as the boys put a shift in, I can't ask for anything more than that. Um, so there we go. Ciao for now. Q Music Man Child. Good luck, everybody.